This video was made in collaboration with the Avatar Wiki. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description. The Life of Kaya Kaya is the second of Avatar Aang and Katara's three children and their only daughter, as well as the couple's only waterbending child. After traveling the world and becoming a renowned healer of her own accord, she settled down with her mother in the Southern Water Tribe following Aang's passing, though she frequently travels to Republic City to help out whenever the city is in trouble. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Kaya. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Early Life Growing up, Kaya and her older brother Bumi were rambunctious children who enjoyed teasing and roughhousing their younger brother Tenzin. Although the three siblings maintained a relatively healthy relationship, Kaya and Bumi became distant with their father due to his preoccupation with his avatar duties, preserving the air nomad culture, and training Tenzin, the only other airbender in the family. She was also educated in air nomad culture, but developed a slight resentment toward Aang and a stronger connection with Katara, who taught her to develop her waterbending and healing abilities to proficiency. As she became older, Kaya discovered that she had a romantic interest in women. When she came out to her family and close friends, all of them were supportive and compassionate, especially Aang. She also traveled around the world as a master healer, which Tenzin described as finding herself. However, after Aang's passing in 153 AG, Kaya returned to the Southern Water Tribe to tend to her grieving mother as her brothers were occupied by their respective professions. Reuniting the Family In 171 AG, Kaya attended the Glacier Spirits Festival in the Southern Water Tribe. She, alongside her mother, awaited the arrival of her brothers at the dock, eagerly greeting Jinora. Assuring her that she had missed her niece, Kaya stated that Tenzin did not bring his family around nearly enough. As she greeted her younger brother, she playfully put forward Tenzin's fear of her as the reason why they never visited, though Tenzin responded that he was not afraid of her anymore. Kaya later attended the royal banquet in honor of Chief Unalak, sitting at a table with her family. During the banquet, she seemingly came to Tenzin's rescue when Bumi was teasing him, though used the opportunity to jab at him as well by saying that Tenzin had always been sensitive. That night, Kaya was awoken by the attack of a dark spirit, though by the time she arrived, the entity had already been calmed by Unalak. She witnessed how Korra told Tenzin she no longer required his services and dismissed him as her teacher, thanking him for his tutelage thus far. Sometime later, Kaya, together with Bumi and Katara, came to see Tenzin off as he prepared to journey toward the Southern Air Temple with his family. She ended up accompanying her younger brother at the insistence of their mother, joyously expressing her eagerness to see the laid-back vacation Tenzin. Family Troubles Arriving at the Southern Air Temple, Kaya and Bumi were not treated with the same respect as Tenzin and his family, as one air acolyte did not even know that Aang had any other children, believing Kaya and her brother to be their servants. They grew even more annoyed when the woman apologized to them for their lack of airbending abilities. During her stay at the Southern Air Temple, Kaya used her time to relax and joke around with her brothers. However, when Tenzin expressed his joy over having his siblings around, as it reminded him of all the vacations they took as children with their dad, Kaya grew annoyed, reminding him that she and Bumi were never part of those vacations. However, her mood brightened when Jinora and Milo arrived as well. When it was discovered that Iki had run away, Kaya suggested that she and her two brothers would search for her together. By dusk, however, the siblings had still not found any trace of the young airbender. When Tenzin mused that Iki's disappearance was probably his fault, Kaya was quick to agree with him, explaining that he had likely been too busy with his duty to Republic City that he had forgotten to spend more time with his children, just like Aang had been with them. She chided Tenzin for being under the false impression that they had all had a happy-go-lucky childhood when that had not been the case for her and Bumi. As Tenzin attempted to avoid talking further about the subject, Kaya and Bumi mocked him for his classic airbending technique of evading things when they get tough. Even after the night had fallen, the trio continued their search for Iki, with Bumi entertaining his siblings with grandiose stories over his past search and rescue missions. As her brothers began to bicker, an annoyed Kaya left them to it and walked on, finding the first trace of her niece, namely footprints leading down a trail next to a waterfall. As Kaya and Tenzin moved to follow the prince, 
Bumi suggested that they descend via the waterfall as that would be much quicker. Kaya opposed the idea initially, stating that the darkness and slippery rocks would make it a very dangerous journey. But after Bumi confidently stated that if he, a non-bender, could make his way down, it should not be any trouble for two benders. She and Tenzin swiftly made their way down using their respective bending arts. Witnessing Bumi's struggle to get down, she mockingly called up to him that he had been right to say that descending the waterfall was faster, though grew worried as the retired commander slipped and fell the entire way down into the water. Kaya started to heal the injured Bumi, though quickly got into an argument with him over his immaturity over their bending abilities, chastising him for failing to accept that he could not do everything a bender could. As he dismissed her, Kaya stopped healing him and let the water drench him, wishing him luck healing himself with his special non-bending powers. However, when Tenzin stated that he had to be the responsible one of the trio, Kaya grew annoyed with him as well, refuting his claim by stating that she was the only one who had taken on the responsibility of taking care of their mother when their father had died. Though Tenzin minimized that responsibility by pointing out that she had moved all over the world for years before that, arguing that it had been time for her to settle down anyway. The argument quickly escalated, turning back to the core issue that Tenzin was heavily favored by Aang and had made it his sole responsibility of carrying on Aang's legacy, as opposed to doing that with his siblings. Irritated, she stated that she should never have accompanied Tenzin on his vacation, something to which her brothers swiftly agreed. Kaya and Bumi curtly agreed to go back to the temple to see if Iki had returned, while Tenzin kept looking on his own. The next day, Kaya found Bumi in the air temple sanctuary looking at their father's statue. Hearing her brother's unanswered search for their father's approval, she hugged him, assuring the ex-commander that Aang would most definitely be proud of him. After Tenzin returned with Iki, he apologized to Kaya and Bumi for his behavior. In turn, she also apologized for dumping her frustrations about their dad on him. Believing her brothers would like to see the picture Katara gave her before they left the southern water tribe of them with their parents when they were younger, she showed the item to them and they huddled around to look at it fondly. A few days later, Kaya witnessed in awe as her oldest nephew orchestrated a ring-tailed winged lemur air show. Eastern Air Temple Having arrived at the Eastern Air Temple, Kaya engaged in a discussion with her older brother calling him out to be a liar for claiming that he once won a rock-throwing contest against an earthbender. Their conversation was cut short when Tenzin announced their itinerary for the day. However, before they could embark on the tour of the temple, Korra arrived pleasantly surprising everyone. She was shocked to learn the events that they had missed by being closed off from the outside world. When it became apparent that Korra needed to enter the spirit world, Kaya accompanied Tenzin, Korra, Bumi, Jinora, Iki, and Milo to several locations where the first two attempted to cross over. After witnessing them fail to cross over a first time by meditation accompanied by melodious ringing of a bell, they moved on to another location, where Kaya placed incense sticks around the meditating duo. When Tenzin failed once again to cross over, growing annoyed over the smoke thwarting his attempt, he blamed his sister for having set up the incense wrong, prompting her to defend herself by pointing out that she followed his instructions. As they moved on to the next location, Kaya observed Janora in apparent pursuit of something, though after questioning her niece about it, she was brushed off, leaving her suspicious that the young airbender was hiding something. Kaya returned to the air temple, where she was shocked to hear Tenzin's confession that he had never been to the spirit world before. When Korra emphasized her urgency to get to the spirit world, Kaya acted upon her suspicions and pushed Janora to reveal her secret, namely that she had been conversing with the spirits. As the dragonfly bunny spirits appeared on Janora's urging, much to everyone's amazement, Kaya corrected Tenzin's earlier statement that Janora was allegedly too young to know about spiritual matters. As Kaya, Bumi, Tenzin, Janora, and Korra followed the dragonfly bunny spirits to an ancient meditation circle, Kaya reassured Janora, who was worried that her father was mad at her, that Tenzin was not mad, but merely suffering from a bruised ego, and she continued to follow Janora and Korra's conversation about Avatar Wan. As they arrived at the location, Kaya witnessed Tenzin perform a cleansing ceremony. However, the ritual drew out a swarm of bat-like dark spirits that promptly attacked them. She protected Janora with her body until Korra used Unalak's spirit-bending technique to calm them down, impressing her. Korra and Tenzin's subsequent reconciliation moved Kaya to tears. Kaya spent the remainder of the day waiting with the others while Tenzin attempted to cross over into the spirit world through meditation. When it became apparent that it was not going to work, 
She told her brother that since he was not ready to guide the Avatar, he should stop being so stubborn and let Jinora fulfill her destiny by guiding Korra into the spirit world. As Korra and Jinora crossed over, Kaya and her brothers remained behind to keep their bodies safe until they returned. As they sat around a campfire next to the girls' bodies, Kaya tried to comfort her younger brother, who was worrying about Jinora being in the spirit world, by pointing out that his daughter was smart and had a strong connection to the spirits. After Bumi took offense to Tenzin's suggestion that Korra and Jinora would be defenseless without their bending, Kaya interjected that Bumi's situation was different due to his positive attitude. She and Bumi were subsequently advised by Tenzin to get some rest, who offered to take first watch. Before lying down, Kaya told him to wake them up if he needed some company. The next morning, Kaya was awoken by Korra's sudden return to the physical world without Jinora. They all returned to the Eastern Air Temple and relayed her eldest child's faith to Pema before traveling back to Republic City, where Kaya was among those witness to Mako's exoneration and release from prison. Journey to the Southern Spirit Portal Kaya later accompanied her brothers and Team Avatar on the Zhu Li, a battleship provided by Varric, back to the South Pole. During that time, she used her healing abilities to sustain Jinora. After the healing session was over, she rejoined her brothers and Team Avatar on deck, though was surprised to hear Tenzin's aggressive plan of action. Upon hearing news of the Southern Water Tribe Rebels' defeat, the party arrived at the White Lotus compound, where Kaya passed Jinora to Katara's care, noting that despite her best attempts to keep Jinora's energy flowing for almost a week, there was nothing more that she could do to prevent her niece from slipping away, placing her hope in the abilities of her mother. They discussed how to break through the northerner blockade surrounding the southern spirit portal. Asami came up with a plan for herself, Mako, and Bolin to cause a diversion with a biplane while the others fly into the portal on Ugi. As the party began their assault, the northern army was revealed to have been supported by dark spirits who attacked Ugi, weighing him down. Korra, Kaya, and Bumi attempted to ward off the dark spirits, but there were too many, ultimately leading to their capture save for Bumi. Brought to a tent, Unalak mockingly congratulated them for procuring front row seats to the beginning of the New World Order, under his leadership as the Dark Avatar. However, after the tribal chief took his leave, Kaya remained optimistic as Bumi had evaded capture and was proven correct when he and Naga eventually freed them all. While Asami returned to the compound with Tanrak, Ugi, Naga, and Pabu, the others ventured into the portal. Tenzin, Kaya, and Bumi split off to find Jinora, while Korra and the others fought Unalak. Searching for Jinora As the three siblings wandered the spirit world, Bumi futilely called out for Jinora's spirit. He suggested that they employ his tracking skills, but Kaya disproved his plan by pointing out that spirits may not even leave footprints. She instead tried meditating before pointing off to her left, claiming that Jinora was in the direction of the spiritual energy she was sensing. But Bumi refuted that there was spiritual energy in every direction. Tenzin decided they needed a spirit guide, but the dark spider spirit he attempted to recruit was not exactly friendly, chasing the trio off a cliff. Completely lost, they started going around in circles before encountering Iroh's spirit, whom they had not seen in 40 years. After explaining their dilemma, Iroh gave them cryptic advice, which gave Tenzin insight on how to find Jinora. Kaya and Bumi were led back to the dark spider spirit by Tenzin, who provoked it, prompting the spirit to capture the siblings and take them to the fog of lost souls. Gazing upon the fog, Kaya voiced her confusion, as she had been under the impression that the spirit would take them to a prison, though before the spirit threw them in, Tenzin assured her that it was one. Wandering the fog, they searched for Jinora while Tenzin urged Kaya and Bumi to remain focused in order to prevent the spirit from driving them mad. After Kaya inquired as to how long an individual could remain trapped in the fog of lost souls, they came across Zhao, who mistook Tenzin for Aang, forcing Kaya and Bumi to throw him off. The siblings later tied themselves together to avoid getting lost, but they slowly succumbed to the fog's influence. Bumi became convinced that he was surrounded by cannibals and Kaya forgot that she even had a family and they both ran off. After Tenzin was able to accept his self-doubts, the fog dissipated and he collected both Jinora and his siblings. As soon as they exited the mental prison, Kaya and Bumi started to regain their bearings. However, Jinora sensed the destruction of Rava. After passing a light spirit butterfly to guide her father, aunt, and uncle out of the spirit world, she vanished. Kaya and her brothers subsequently returned to the physical world where they found Korra, Mako, and Bolin unconscious in the snow and carried them back to the spirit world, 
where Kaya used her spirit water to heal them. As Korra lamented her failure to stop Unalak and Vatu from fusing into the Dark Avatar and protect Rava, Kaya encouraged Tenzin to help the Avatar, resulting in Korra manifesting her spirit in an enormous size and vanishing through the combined spirit portal. This left her physical body unprotected, however, prompting Kaya, her brothers, Mako and Bolin to defend it and themselves against the dark spirits that converged on the Tree of Time. Despite the help of Desna and Eska, the group was overwhelmed and forced into the tree's hollow. As they were on the verge of being overrun, Kaya and the others were saved by Korra's returning spirit. As they all exited the tree, they witnessed in awe how Korra fused with Rava, recreating the Avatar spirit. After their return to the physical world, Kaya stood by her family as Korra announced the end of the Water Tribe Civil War with the Southern Water Tribe's independence and Tanrak's election as the new chief, as well as the beginning of a new age where humans and spirits would coexist. Post-Harmonic Convergence Two weeks later, Kaya was helping Pema take care of Rowan on Air Temple Island when Iki called for her father. She, alongside Pema and Janora, hastily followed Tenzin outside to find out what the problem was. Though when Bumi started telling about his ventures with Boomju and claimed he could airbend, she promptly turned to go back inside. During dinner, an irritated Kaya refuted Bumi's claim that his napkin moved by pointing out that he had blown on it. However, she looked on in shock when Bumi suddenly airbent. The next day, Kaya and the others watched as Bumi tried unsuccessfully to airbend on command. While Korra, Tenzin, and Iki mused over possible reasons for the revelation, Kaya told her oldest brother that she had been feeling a change in his aura since harmonic convergence, though she was annoyed when he snapped at her for not telling him earlier. That evening, Kaya remained on the island while Korra, Tenzin, and Bolin traveled to Kyoshi Bridge to help Republic City Police deal with Daw, another new airbender. After several reports spread of airbenders appearing throughout the Earth Kingdom, Kaya watched as Asami landed a Future Industries airship on the island in order to take Tenzin, Bumi, Janora, and the rest of Team Avatar to Ba Sing Se. She announced that she would remain on the island with Pema and happily picked up Rowan, asking him if he was excited to spend time with her while jiggling him up and down. Disheartened when he threw up on her, she used her waterbending to remove his mess off her clothes while Pema stated that Rowan liked her. When Iki and Milo complained about the unfairness that they needed to stay on the island while Janora was allowed to accompany the group to Ba Sing Se, Kaya diffused the tension by telling them that they were needed on the island to provide guidance to the new airbenders around the city, deeming it to be an important task as well. She later waved goodbye as the group departed on the airship and spent the following days helping the new airbenders of Republic City get settled in on the island. Discovering Zaheer some days later, Kaya was conversing with Pema when Iki and Milo came into the dining hall to show Daw and two new airbenders around the premises. And later on, her youngest niece excitedly announced the arrival of another airbender to her, Yoru. While nearing dusk, Kaya approached Milo training the new airbenders at the rotating gates to announce that Tenzin had found other new airbenders and requested for them to meet at the Northern Air Temple to commence formal training. Despite being confused by Yoru's inquiry about whether the Avatar would join them, she replied that Korra decided to separate from Tenzin during their travels. As night fell, Kaya found Iki talking with Yoru in Tenzin's study. Suspicious of the stranger, she encouraged her niece to head to bed before questioning Yoru, remarking that he had extensive knowledge of the Air Nomads for someone who was new to the ability. Musing over the fact that he had been able to move through the gates like an expert, she inquired about his origins, so when he brushed her off by saying she probably had never heard of the small village up north, she realized that Yoru's true identity was Zaheer, and attacked him with ice bullets, which he swiftly deflected using Tenzin's airbender staff. As Zaheer attempted to fly away, Kaya called for reinforcements and used a water tentacle to grab and ground Zaheer, whom she subsequently attempted to trap in ice, albeit unsuccessfully. To prevent his escape, Kaya conjured a small wave to attack Zaheer, who knocked her down with an air blast. Two firebending sentries attempted to aid Kaya, who tried once more to subdue Zaheer using a pressurized water drill, which the airbender evaded before retaliating with an air bullet from his staff and fleeing the scene. The next day, Kaya accompanied Pema, Iki, Milo, Rohan, and the new airbenders to the Northern Air Temple. Upon disembarking, she informed Tenzin of her clash with Zaheer, who managed to escape with the locket of Guru Lahima. 
As Tenzin helped her with the correct pronunciation of the guru's name, she remarked that she could never remember all the gurus and inquired if Tenzin remembered the long and boring story about the one who never ate. The Red Lotus Sambush Sometime later, Kaya was meditating with Opal and the other new female airbenders when Bumi suddenly came bursting through the doors, saying that Zahir had arrived at the temple and that they needed to evacuate immediately. Before they could reach the bison stables, however, Kaya and the others were forced to stop and comply with the Red Lotus orders when Ming Hua had captured Opal and was threatening to kill her. After being rounded up in one of the temple's courtyards with everyone else, Kaya comfortingly held Opal while Zahir told them they would be used as leverage to get to Korra and would be unharmed as long as they cooperated. After Tenzin blew back Zahir, Minghua, and Gazan, Kaya was asked to fight alongside her brothers in an attempt to give the others time to flee the temple. Bending water from a fountain to form a ring around her, she prepared to engage Minghua. The two waterbenders faced off, trading several blows and shifting between deflecting, evading, and attacking. Kaya managed to break off Minghua's ice blade appendage and threw it back at her, though the armless bender grabbed the blade and sent it back with two more, knocking Kaya against the wall with the last fragment of an ice bullet. However, when Minghua charged her to finish her off, Kaya managed to briefly get the upper hand by blasting her aggressor off the temple's balcony. The victory was short-lasted, however, as Minghua used the water of Kaya's attack to create six water arms as opposed to a regular two. Overwhelmed by the extra attack force, Kaya was pushed back into the temple where she ended up back with Bumi, both panting heavily. Despite now fighting together, the siblings were forced on the balcony themselves now under a barrage of water, earth, and lava, and were eventually tossed over by an earth pillar attack. Kaya was saved from plummeting to her death by Bumi, who used his airbending to bring them close enough to the ledge to find a handhold. However, their new situation brought them directly into the line of sight of Pali. Realizing that they were a perfect target for the combustion bender, Kaya urged her brother to let go, reasoning that they might as well risk the fall against certain death. Tumbling down through the trees and over rocks, the siblings eventually came to a halt on a mountain path, where they remained unconscious, though alive. Badly injured, Kaya and Bumi were found by the Red Lotus and taken to a cave complex a few miles away from the temple, along with the rest of the temple's inhabitants, where they were all shackled to the floor by their wrists. After Team Avatar burst through the wall and rescued them, she was hoisted up and supported by Otaku and a female airbender to make it outside, where she was placed against a rock from which she could spectate the battle between Korra and Zaheer. After Zaheer had been incapacitated, Kaya witnessed how Su Yin extracted the mercury from the Avatar's body, saving her life. Kaya returned home with everyone, where she received proper care. Two weeks later, despite still leaning heavily on a crutch for support, she witnessed Janora's anointment ceremony as a master airbender, during which her arrow tattoos were revealed. Return to the South After Janora's anointment ceremony and no longer in need of her crutch, Kaya waited with Tanrak, Sena, and Naga on the ferry dock of Air Temple Island, while Korra said goodbye to Tenzin, Janora, and the rest of Team Avatar. She later boarded the steamship heading toward the Southern Water Tribe together with Korra and her family, and she looked on while they were being waved off by the group. 174 AG In the aftermath of Kuvira's invasion of the United Republic of Nations, Kaya joined the Air Nation at the temporary evacuee camp as one of the healers. As such, she was present when Korra and Asami, having returned from their trip to the spirit world, reunited with their friends at camp, and she warmly welcomed them back. Having spoken with some of the evacuees at the camp before, Kaya had realized how demoralized they were and suggested to Tenzin that Korra, whom the refugees revered as the savior of the city, talk to them to lift their spirits. She was surprised to see Asami, whom Korra had invited to accompany her during her speech, decline the offer with a gloomy air around her, in favor of working with Julie instead. When Korra came back and instantly brightened Asami's mood by working seamlessly together on plans for a new housing development, Kaya agreed with Tenzin that the two young women made a good team regarding their close interaction with a knowing smile on her face. That evening, Kaya sought out Korra and Asami on Air Temple Island. When she found them watching the sunset together at the gazebo, she told them that they made a beautiful couple. She explained to a shocked Korra and Asami that she had her suspicions ever since Tenzin had told her the two of them had left on their vacation together, as it reminded her of the first romantic getaway she enjoyed with her first girlfriend. It had never made her happier. Surprised by the revelation, Korra noted that she had not known about Kaya's romantic preferences, to which Kaya answered that, while all her friends and family knew, she had no interest in sharing that piece of her life with everyone. 
She asked if they had already told anyone and learned that Cora's parents knew, but despite being understanding, they had seemed worried about the reaction of the rest of the world. Kaya was not surprised about Tanrak and Senna's reaction, elaborating that it was water tribe tradition to keep family matters private, even though no one would be judged for coming out. When Cora asked how Aang reacted when she told him of her romantic preferences in women, Kaya fondly recalled that her father had been nothing but supportive. She reminded the new couple that each nation had their own customs when it came to same-sex couples, and that their story was their own, to be made public when and if they desired to do so. Their conversation was interrupted, however, when Bolin and Mako appeared. Kaya left the four friends to themselves, though not before letting the young women know that they could always talk to her if they ever needed a listening ear. The following days, Kaya continued helping out at the refugee camp. One night, while awaiting a new shipment of supplies coming from Ba Sing Se, she, alongside Tenzin, Julie, and Varric, distributed very cakes to the hungry evacuees, though their supplies soon ran out. Kaya also worked at the medic tent where she was visited by Mako, though despite several healing sessions, she was unable to return the firebending ability to his left arm. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.